Hey all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am doing a video that has literally been requested for years and I have never done it. And today I am going to be doing a tattoo tour and Q and A. I asked you on my Instagram stories and also on my YouTube community page, if you all had any tattoo questions, whether they were about my tattoos, tattoos in general. And I was, I have to admit, kind of shocked how many questions came in. I was expecting like a couple of ones that I knew would come in, like, you know, do they hurt, things like that. But I was not expecting some really cool questions from all of you. Again, not just about my tattoos, but about tattoos in general. So the way that I'm going to try to do this is that I am going to take your questions and I am going to answer them by showing you the tattoo that it corresponds with. So I hope that makes sense. And at the end, I'm gonna answer some of the more general tattoo questions and kind of go into them. Now I have to say, obviously I am not a tattoo expert. I'm not covered. I am not a tattoo artist. This is just what I know from being tattooed for the last 23 years. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you actually see like the smoke coming out of my ears when I was calculating that? And then the vomit that came afterwards from how many years I've been getting tattooed? Okay. If this is your first time to my channel, hi, my name is Linda and I am a cruelty-free beauty YouTuber and I always wanna help you decide whether or not makeup, skincare, hair care products are worth your money, whether they're drugstore priced or luxury priced, I just want you to spend your money wisely. Also, I'm doing my very first low buy year, so I'm trying to really be more mindful about what comes into my collection and just really be critical of what I'm bringing in. And most importantly, also just appreciating what I have. I do do a few little lifestyle things here and there, so I guess this would count as lifestyle lifestyles of the rich. But if you're into that, I would love if you'd hit that subscribe button and become a part of the Rockstar fam. We are going to jump right into this. Now, one disclaimer I do want to say is that the reason that I've been avoiding this video for the entirety of my YouTube career is because I have um, body image issues. I do, like a lot of us do. And I know a lot of that is rooted in body dysmorphia, where what I see in the mirror is not actually what exists in this world, or I see it as something totally different. So I'm not gonna lie in saying that this video was a little hard for me to film. Um, I did have my husband shoot some parts of me that I couldn't get to myself. So it was a little bit hard to film, but at the same time, I know that I'm not alone. I know that a lot of us suffer from these same image issues and everything like that, and a lot of it's in my head, but I do just kind of want to put that disclaimer out and to say also that if you are planning on coming here and leaving some shitty comments, they will be deleted, you will be blocked. Thank you very much. Okay, let's jump in, shall we? So someone asked, do you have any secrets related to your tattoos or embarrassing stories? And please tell. So I have one that I will call an embarrassing story, okay? And that is this tattoo that is on my ankle. So I was in LA, I was visiting a girlfriend and we decided to both get tattooed together. My tattoo is a combination of the skull with a top hat drawing that Slash likes to autograph things with and Slash from Guns N' Roses. You know, I have a deep seated love for the man. I really, really appreciate his talent. And then I also wanted to throw in a little bit of, at the time there was a book that came out called The Heroine Diaries by Nikki Six, who is of Motley Crue. And The Heroine Diaries was written in this really cool font. My favorite song from that time period that he had created was Life is Beautiful. And that was by his band 6AM. So I decided, you know what, I love Slash. I love Nikki Six. I'm gonna combine these things together. So here's the reason it's an embarrassing story to tell. I was sitting on the tattoo table doing completely fine. Now, ankle tattoos suck, okay? They suck, they hurt, I don't like getting them, not gonna get any more. But I was doing absolutely fine. We were all chatting, the tattoo artist, my friend, Tim, everybody, you know, we were all doing great. And then the tattoo artist started talking about people that pass out when they're getting tattoos. And she was like, you know what? It's always these big burly dudes who come in and they're like, nothing hurts me. I'm gonna get tattooed and then they pass out. And she just started talking about all these people who have passed out. And in my head, I was like, am I gonna be one of those people who passes out? Maybe I'm gonna pass out. Oh, guess what? I'm passing out. And I had time to say, Tim, and then I was out like a light. The pain wasn't even that freaking bad and I was so close to the end of the tattoo which didn't take a long time and I was out like a freaking light. 
And I know it's nothing to be embarrassed about because so many people pass out during tattoos or pass out when their body is in extreme shock like that. But I have to admit, I definitely was a little bit embarrassed. And the worst part is, okay, if you've ever passed out, you know when you come to, you just need to chill, you wanna drink your water, you wanna do your thing. No, I had to continue getting tattooed because we had to finish it because I was only there for a visit. So anyway, all is well, the tattoo is fine. This tattoo in particular, I would say, uh, it's not a regret. I will start off by saying, spoiler alert, I don't regret a single tattoo I have. I believe that my tattoos all mark certain places I was in my life. So that marked me in like my mid 20s, visiting LA, feeling badass. I was getting tattooed on the Sunset Strip with one of my best girlfriends and it was just a really good time. The only thing I guess I regret is that I don't think the tattoo artist did a very good job. It's very blown out now and that could be because I've gained a little bit of weight, maybe my ankle swelled, things like that, but I don't think it's the cleanest looking tattoo I have, but again, I don't regret it for a second. For my most sentimental tattoo, I know that you all have seen this one and a lot of you have commented on it and it's this right here. So on my wrist in script, I have the word Hazel. Hazel is my mother who is my absolute best friend in the whole wide world. I adore her, we have such a good time together and this is her signature. So this one is definitely the most sentimental to me. It really means a whole lot to me. I got it on the same side that my heart is because my mother is my heart and I know that's overly dramatic, but another Another question in here was, what does your mother think of your tattoos? I'll go into what she thought of my first tattoo in a second, but this one, it cracked me up so badly because she never said, oh God, those are disgusting or things like that, but I know it wasn't really her thing. And then I showed her this one and her reaction ever more since I've gotten it, and this was years ago at this point, anytime like let's say we're at a family function, she'll go, Linda, show them what you did to your wrist. Show them that tattoo you did to your wrist. Ugh. And she gets this like faux offended feel, but I know, I know she likes it. I know she thinks it's a little heartwarming. And like when I first showed it to her, I think she cried a little bit, but she was laughing at the same time. But whenever we go out, it's like, Linda, show them that one. Show them the one on your wrist. But let's go into the question where someone asked what my mom thinks of my tattoos in general. And let's talk about my very first tattoo. So I got this on my 18th birthday. I have no shame in telling you the year was 1998. I am 41 years old. 1998 tattoos were very different than current tattoos. Back then, I didn't really know anything. The internet was not even fully developed yet, so it's not like I was spending my time looking up tattoo pictures. There were tattoo magazines, but I wasn't in that world at all yet. So I walked in to the first tattoo parlor I could find, which was completely a tattoo parlor on one side and a biker bar on the other. I grew up in New Jersey, so this woman tattooed me that had extreme Jersey bangs all the way up and a big old French braid and her jeans were cuffed like it was 1998 in the extreme. And I said, I wanna get a tattoo. And they said, okay, what are you here for? And I said, I don't know. And they go, pick something. And I said, all right, thinking this is how it's done. So I walked to the wall and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a rose. So I picked out this little tiny rose to go on my little tiny shoulder. And I was like, you know what though? I'm gonna be creative. I'm gonna be a rebel, make the rose purple. I think the tattoo was done in like 15 minutes. So it's so ridiculous. And I've had it touched up about twice now, I think, but it's still pretty blown out. I will never cover it up. It was my first, it was my 18th birthday. I was so pumped to get it. And then later on, much later on, I wanna say maybe like 2005, I added two little stars around it. So one star is pink and the other one is blue. And my husband has a pink star here and a blue star here. So that's sort of our couple's tattoo. So even though my husband and I have been together over 20 years, that is our way of getting matching tattoos. So this was probably my favorite question. I had a whole bunch of people ask me, you know, what is your most meaningful tattoo? This person asked, what is your most meaningless tattoo? And I had to laugh so hard because honestly, so many of my tattoos, most of my tattoos are meaningless. But I think for most meaningless, I'm gonna have to go with two. And I got them at separate times, so it's a little bit of a cheat, but they are my two wrist tattoos. So they don't do it as much anymore, but a lot of tattoo parlors in my area used to, on Friday the 13th, they would do $13 tattoos. And they're tattoos that say 13 in them, so this is a little anchor with, you know, the one three, and this is meant to be lightning bolts in the shape of a one three. That's a stretch, right? But these were literally just me walking in and going, you know what? Why not? Let's get some tattoos today. 
So these, I mean, I love them. I think they're cute, but they are definitely my most meaningless tattoos. So there's one that I do want to save for last, and I'm going to answer the questions that go along with it, but I figure I should talk to you about my arms. So both of my arms are meaningful to me in certain ways, but in very different ways. So the very first arm piece that I ever got was this one on my right shoulder. So this was meant to be a sort of collage of so many things that are really, really important to me. So we've got the can of Aquanet and so many people see that and they ask me if I'm a hairstylist. No, Aquanet is meant to represent my absolute love of 80s hair metal bands and the 80s aesthetic in general. Finally have my big 80s hair I've always wanted my whole life. So that is meant to represent that. And then we have two lipsticks on either side, which is meant to represent my absolute love for makeup. Here's a little uh, interesting behind the scenes side fact that not a whole lot of people know. But originally these lipsticks said MAC on them because I was so in love with MAC makeup, but I had it colored in once I went cruelty free. And maybe if MAC goes cruelty free again, will I have MAC put back on these? No, I'm not going to. But they did, they were MAC lipsticks. And then at the very bottom, we have the lips from Rocky Horror Picture Show. So when I was about 16 through 18, every single weekend, I went to see a showing of Rocky Horror Picture Show at a local theater to me in New Jersey, Mount E from New Jersey, the transducer place players if anyone is curious and it was a really really meaningful and important time in my life and if you've never experienced a Rocky Horror Picture Show live showing it might seem stupid that I'm saying seeing a movie was an experience and it's such a big moment in my life but it was it really was like I found this group of people that accepted me for who I was I accepted them for who they were and it was just such an eye-opening awakening thing and this movie is what kicked it all off and this sense of community every week at this movie so yeah this tattoo is super important to me and I super love it the design aspect of it I probably would have changed it if I got it right now I probably would have made it a little bit more detailed but I don't regret it for a second and then moving on to the left arm so this is the very first tattoo I got done by Megan Massacre in New York City she was on New York Inc the TV show that was on back in the day and as soon as I saw her on that show I knew I wanted to get tattooed by her someday so I did get this in 2017 we have the all-seeing eye at the top with a crystal ball filled with crystals themselves and a sort of dripping um, chains with crystals on the bottom as well. I really love this piece. I love the galaxy colors within the crystal ball. I just, I love how it came out and it was so not what I expected. She put so much delicate filigree at the top here and I didn't even know I wanted it until I had it. One big thing I was like, you know what? The eye has to be green because fun fact, I've always wanted green eyes. I'm so jealous of people with green eyes. Maybe someday I'll get contacts to fake it. But yeah, I wanted the eye to be green, but I'm just, I'm so in love with this tattoo. I still can't believe I have it. <laughs> I think a lot of the rest of the questions have to do with general care, so I'm just gonna go over the realm of tattoos I have. So let's start with these little babies. This is, there's there's nothing to tell here. I just felt like getting some cherries on my tatas. I got these when I was about 25 years old, 26 years old. No, it was right after my wedding. So I was 26 when I got these and there's literally no meaning behind them. I'm sorry to tell you, I wish I had some great meaning about how my grandmother had cherry trees in her backyard. No, no, my grandma made some great matzo ball soup, but she didn't grow any cherries. So I really do still absolutely love these. I got these right after my wedding, end of story. Let's talk about my back. Okay, we're gonna go from bottom to top. So at the bottom, we have 1999 encapsulated. We have a tribal tattoo with an ankh in the center. And again, it's so funny to me because so many people will be like, do you regret that tattoo? Because, oh my God, tribal, blah, blah, blah. Not for a second. It represents me moving to Maryland. It represents me at my little spookiest goth phase. And I really wanted, I was like, I want an ankh because I'm spooky like that and put some black tribal around it. <laughs> so freaking ridiculous but actually like I kind of love that tattoo again it represented a very specific time in my life so it makes me happy then all the way down my spine in a Y shape I just have a bunch of stars and that is due to the stars in the sky nope no meaning no meaning again I just felt like getting some freaking stars I really do like these stars I don't show them much anymore because I don't really like show my back but my back used to be my absolute favorite part of my whole body. I did a whole lot of like back work whenever I was exercising and my back looked bang in in my mid 20s. So I wanted to get that and I wanted to show it off. Don't show it off so much anymore, but there we go. 
And then across the top of my shoulder blades, we have another one of my, it, it's interesting. This is the one, the tattoo with the most sentiment to it, but I guess that's one of the tattoos with the most meaning to it. So it is script font that says, don't ever put down the pen. And that is in memory of a good friend of mine. Um, his name was Scott Kirkpatrick. Um, he was Sergeant Scott Kirkpatrick and he unfortunately was killed in Iraq in 2007. But Scott was a slam poet. He was actually like a winning slam poet. He competed in all the slam uh, competitions in DC and won a few times. He was absolutely incredible. He was a very close friend of mine. I miss him terribly, but one of the lines from one of his poems that like really resonated with me was don't ever put down the pen and that was just to encourage people if you write keep writing keep feeling keep vibing you know all of that so that tattoo has a lot of meaning to me i have to admit i wish i had kind of gotten it in a little bit different font because it's a little blown out now but again i don't regret it some other tattoos i just realized i forgot to talk about are on my ankles as well so i have this little girly skull with her pigtails surrounded by her cherries and her meaning is her meaning is nothing one thing i do remember about getting that tattoo is that it was during the super bowl and i want to say it was maybe 2001 ish and everyone in the tattoo parlor was watching the Super Bowl as I was getting tattooed and like cheering loudly at certain parts. And I was like, don't move. And on the other ankle, I have this little poison lady. So Sailor Jerry is a very famous style of tattooing. Uh, it is a very old school style of tattooing. And this is something that I picked off of a wall, but it is sort of like an homage to old school tattoos. And then we're gonna answer a ton of questions with one tattoo. We have, what was your most painful one? Which tattoo hurt the worst? What does it feel like? Do you have a favorite? And all of these <laughs> go to my most recent tattoo that I only just finished in December. And that is my very first tattoo on my thigh. And that is of my cat Spooky. This tattoo was kind of next level for me. I always knew that I wanted to have a tattoo to represent my cat Spooky. I have had her for 18 and a half years, almost half of my life I have had this cat in my life and I knew I wanted to have something that represented her. But the more I started thinking about it, the more I wanted it to be a portrait. And there was only one person that I trusted to do this pet portrait. And again, that was Megan Massacre, who is in New York City. Uh, she specializes in animal portraits as well as other photorealistic tattoos. And I just, I can't stop looking at this tattoo. She captured so much of Spooky. She captured her dark fur that is like super dark chocolate brown, but not black and the white bit and the blue in her eyes that is so crystal clear. And right around Spooky, I have her favorite toy. So her very favorite toy is a string on a stick with a knit octopus at the bottom. I had her make the frame of the tattoo, the rope from the toy and then the actual toy in it. And I just, I couldn't be happier with it. I couldn't be happier with it, but I will say this was, holy shit, my most painful tattoo. So my first sitting was supposed to be seven hours, which that's a lot. That's a lot because you gotta think, your body is going into shock because it is getting jabbed with a needle thousands upon thousands of times, okay? And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be fine, I'm gonna be fine. But I went to New York City and I was by myself. So my anxiety was up and I didn't really have anybody to talk to about it and it was all building up, but I was like, I'm gonna be cool. And then after I think four and a half hours, I lost it and I couldn't do any more and I had to stop. This was supposed to be a one and done one day session and I had to stop. I was having a panic attack and it hurt so badly. I can't even tell you how badly it hurt. And I was really surprised because I was always told that fattier parts of your body don't hurt as bad. No, 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 no. It hurt like a son of a bitch. We used numbing cream. We waited a while. We took breaks. I was eating. I was drinking. I was doing all that. And it hurt so badly. I couldn't even function. So I had to stop and come back for a second four and a half hour session in December. And we finished it and all was well, but holy crap, by far my most painful tattoo, by far my favorite tattoo. Oh, one other set I forgot to talk about is my little finger tattoos. So on my pointer and middle fingers on both hands, I have these little baby tattoos. They don't have a whole lot of meaning. I really like the all seeing eye. Um, I am a goddamn mermaid, so that's why I got a seashell. 
Um, I like the moon, so that's why I got a moon. Deep Thoughts by Linda. So that was the tattoo tour portion of this video, but now I wanted to answer some of your questions. You all had a lot of really, really good questions about tattoos in general. One person asked, do you have a routine or ritual before getting inked or while in the chair? Yes, and it's so funny because a lot of people who get tattooed do like they have their routines. My routines are the day before I eat pasta. I don't know why. It's something in me that I'm like, I want to carb up. You want, you want to eat. You have to eat before getting a tattoo or else your body going into shock like that, you're going to pass right out. I'm telling you, you'll pass right out. So make sure to eat. And I always eat pasta. And while I'm getting tattooed, I always drink Gatorade and I have candy nearby because you want to keep your blood sugar up, but also it distracts me. So yes, I will have like a candy that I can eat piece by piece, like gummies or something like that and Gatorade. Does everyone have tattoo rituals related solely around food or just me? One person asked, do you ever fear regretting any of your tattoos? So this is more about regretting them in the future. And I know I touched upon this, but absolutely no, I do not regret any of mine. I'm not going to regret them because again, the way I look at my tattoos is these are pieces of my life. This is where I was at this time. And this is where I was at this time. And no, I'm not going to regret these. I did have a couple questions relating to aftercare. Now, this is individual to a whole lot of people. A lot of people who get tattooed will have very strong opinions about what they should be doing after they get tattooed. So please know this is just my experience and this is just what I do. So I have two products that I swear by. The very first one is Saniderm. When I first started getting tattooed, it was not uncommon for your tattoo artist to put saran wrap around your tattoo or take one of those pads that you find in meat, put that on top and then just like tape that on. That was what I had for a long time. This has changed the game for me. And I think that Megan was the first tattoo artist to use this on me. So what Saniderm is, it's a clear film that adheres itself to your skin. So they put it around enough to seal it on all sides and you leave it like that for three days. And what that does is it just seals everything in. It keeps the color in. It keeps, honestly, this sounds gross, but it keeps all your body fluids in there so that your tattoo stays super hydrated. And when you take that off, your tattoo is almost healed because it has stayed hydrated. And you gotta think, a tattoo is a wound. It is a wound, it is a scar on your skin. So you wanna keep it as hydrated and comfortable as possible because otherwise, if you're not careful with it, you could get infections because it's an open wound. So the time that you have the Saniderm on really helps it to heal quickly. And then once the Saniderm comes off, I have to confess that the product I use is one of the only products, I think I have two in my life that I use that are not cruelty free. Um, and that is Aquaphor because I do swear by this formula for keeping my tattoos safe, for keeping them bright, for keeping them hydrated, for keeping them, uh, you know, not breathing the bacteria of the air. I really do swear by this. If anyone has something similar to Aquaphor that they could recommend that's not, or that is cruelty free, I am all ears. But as of right now, it's literally this and I uh, am addicted to chapstick. Like actually addicted. Like I will cry if I don't have chapstick. It's an issue. This one cracked me up because someone asked, how do I plan for tattoos so I don't end up with an unrelated random mess of tattoos? I am not an expert on this. Now I will have to say, I said this before, but oh my God, the tattoo world is so different because I feel like now a lot of people, when they're going to get a tattoo, they have this plan in their mind of, okay, you know what? I'm going to get a full sleeve and these are the elements that I want in the sleeve and they draw it out or they say, you know what? I would like to get my whole back done or you know what? I want to get these tattoos that all represent different parts of my life. It was not like that. I'm telling you, it was not like that in the late 90s. It was not like that in the early 2000s for the most part. There were people that were like that. I was not. I just went, I feel like getting a tattoo today. A lot of people ask, do tattoos hurt? And I'm going to say yes for every single one of them. They're not pleasant for me. There are those people who say, I fell asleep while I was getting tattooed. Or on the opposite spectrum of that, some people actually like orgasm as they're getting tattooed. I am not one of those people, okay? I don't like the process of getting tattooed. I make the most awful faces you can imagine. The whole time I'm getting tattooed, I'm like... like it, it's a lot of that. It's a lot of that. Everybody is different, but I think 9 out of 10 people will tell you tattoos hurt. Be prepared. 
Someone asked a cool question. Did you have any tattoo that you planned, but you're glad you didn't get? So many. Oh my gosh. I actually went into a tattoo parlor and had a stencil put on my finger because if you don't know, they do put a stencil on first so you can make sure you like the placement and the size, all of those good things. And I had a stencil placed on my finger of a big old anchor. And I looked at the stencil and went, nope. And I walked out. <laughs> And I'm glad I didn't get it, not because I would have regret having an anchor on my finger, but just because that wasn't something I wanted at the time and I said no. Other than that though, like there have been so many tattoo ideas that I've had like song lyrics or portraits of people, things like that. I'm, I'm glad I didn't get anything that I didn't want. So that is it. I hope you enjoyed my little tattoo tour, my tattoo Q&A, everything like that. If you have any additional questions about my tattoos, about tattoos in general, leave them in the comments down below. I will try to answer as many as I can and also other tattooed folks chip in your answer on those questions because I would love to see everybody's differing opinions there. It's so cool to find out how like one person views tattoos as opposed to another. If you like this video, I would love if you'd give it a big old thumbs up. That does help out my channel and share the video if you feel even super generous. You all can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Those are all glitter fallout. And as always and forever, you're super freaking rock stars. I love you so much with my whole heart and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.